Hello and welcome to this very special interview. We have with us the 2010 Commonwealth Games gold medalist for India, Somdev Devarman. Uh, he is part of the Sony Sports team as an expert. In fact, don't forget to watch the Roland Garros 2022 from May 22nd live on uh, Sony 6, Sony 102 in English, Sony 103 in Hindi, and Sony 104 in Tamil and Telugu channels. Uh, Somdev, welcome to NDTV. Let's start with uh, the two giants of the game. Let's start with Rafa Nadal and uh, Novak Djokovic. The French Open marks their comeback. How do you see this panning out? Well, uh, drama, 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 isn't it? When it comes to <laughs> another Grand Slam, the second Grand Slam of the year. Uh, but I feel like, uh, you know, they're in very different places right now. With, let's begin with Novak because, you know, he's had an interesting 2022 to say the least. Uh, missed out on, you know, his favorite slam, the Aussie, which he's won nine times. We all know why he missed that. Uh, yeah. But even when he, you know, even when you're talking about the world number one, Next uh, time you know, the world number one needs tennis matches under his belt. The world number one needs to, you know, be sharp, you know, have wins, win tournaments, you know, feel like he's out there playing his best tennis. And, you know, we saw at the start of the year that Novak was certainly far from his best. Even when he did come back, he had yeah. some uncanny losses. He wasn't winning tournaments, you know, in, in his hometown, he lost to Rublev in the third set. Uh, and even in that entire tournament leading up to it, he was losing a lot of... Uh, first sets and you know it shocked a lot of the tennis world but you know for me I felt like it was very normal because he hadn't played the kind of matches that he's used to playing especially to begin the season so uh, the good news for Novak is despite losing to Alcaraz in the semis of, of Madrid uh, he's gone ahead and won the title in Rome and he's won it uh, fairly right. convincingly yeah. you know so I think uh, when it comes to Novak he's definitely going into the French Open with as good as uh, form that you know he can expect um, and he for sure would have liked to have won a title and the fact that he's won a huge title in Rome is going to give him confidence and I think he's going to be exactly where he wants to be. Now when it comes to Rafa, completely different story because, you know, last year Rafa was talking about, you know, not, not really knowing exactly where he was going to be with his injuries, if he was even going to be able to play uh, the Aussie. Comes out, plays the Aussie, wins it and, wins it. you know wins it and all, all of us are kind of sitting over there saying all right rafa is ready for the french open um and he's like he's always been he always goes in he always you know takes a few weeks gets ready for playing monte carlo barcelona madrid rome and before you know it he's ready and he's won the title 13 times so he's definitely not someone you're counting out but i do think that it's safe to say um that you know in the last 15 or 16 years this is probably the most hurt the most injured that Rafa has been yeah. while he's been to the French Open, uh, you know, and his, uh, I think the rest of the field also understands that because he's been fairly vocal about the fact that he's had to play through injuries, uh, you know, his whole career. And, um, you know, knowing Rafa, that's just the kind of uh, guy he is, you know, I think he's not going to go up there, he's not going to make excuses, uh, but he's going to fight, see, you know, give it his best and, you know, see where he stands at the end of the week. Okay, so in that case, who do you believe is your pick of the tournament? And this is both in men's and women. Well, we just discussed the men's. Uh, Novak Djokovic, in my opinion, is the favourite. Alcaraz is definitely the most exciting. I uh, haven't seen someone with this kind of energy and this kind of game and this kind of belief. And, you know, just the aura that he has at 19 years old is uh, something that we haven't seen since pretty much Rafa was 19. So, uh, you know, I do think it's shaping up to be a very, very exciting tournament indeed. And in the women's side, uh, in my opinion, one name, one name only right now uh, in terms of favorites. And that name is Iga Swiatek, the 20-year-old from yeah. Poland, who's had, I mean, just an incredible season. She's, she has won a slam before. It has been a French Open and uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah. She won that by losing less than 30 games. Less than 30 games. She didn't lose a set uh, and just dominated that tournament a couple of years ago. And uh, you know, she's 20 years old, she has, uh, she's athletic, she has weapons, she has a massive serve, uh, she plays good defense, great forehand, has all the weapons, mentality is unbelievable. Uh, she made the semis at, uh, and she's only lost three matches, three matches in all of 2022, uh, winning the last five events she's played, including Rome, which was last week. She, I mean, won the Sunshine Double with Indian Wells in Miami, uh, which is incredibly hard to do. Uh, won Doha before that, uh, won Stuttgart, which was also, you know, a WTA big event on, on, on clay. And uh, coming into the French Open in, 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 you know, absolutely crazy form, you know. So the overwhelming favorite. But, uh, you know, that being said, I think one of the things that 
always makes the women's draw a little exciting is that you have a lot of girls a lot of women out there who do believe that they can go out there and win their first slam you know uh, you have so right. many one slam wins you have emma radukanu you have you know so stevens uh, you even have experienced players who won multiple slams like simona harap who definitely feel like uh, they can be in the mix if uh, they take their opportunities um, and then you also have players like uh, you know maria sakari uh, on jibor uh, sabalenka kontovet who are all in the top 10 who are yet to win their first slam so the the thing that always makes the women's uh, draw a little bit more unpredictable is you have all of these players who are at a similar level uh, i think it's also exciting to see somebody like priyanka andreas to come back and play healthy tennis because if she's healthy she also has the game to you know win and win grand slam titles like she has in the past so for me the one favorite the one clear favorite head and shoulders is iga shontek and right behind her uh, there's you know the the rest of the field kind of chasing and and realistically have chances to uh, you know do something in special at uh, the Roland Garros right you you mentioned rafa nadal and his injury we have seen him playing with injuries in tournaments and uh, in fact winning those tournaments how do you think this time it is going to be different do you believe that he will have any pressure of winning a tournament that he has always managed to win remember he is a 13 times champion when it comes to french open do you think uh, because of his injury it will be a little different this time uh you know when it comes to nadal especially because he's done it through his career you know i think uh, very few players in the world of tennis in the history of tennis have handled pressure as well as uh, rafa has uh yeah. you know so it's clear and so i i don't think that the pressure uh, is going to play a big part you know the guy has won the tournament more than anybody he has won any grand slam ever in men and women he's won the tournament 13 times like you mentioned earlier so i don't think it's about the pressure or about you know rising to the occasion i think that's something that he's done since he was a teenager uh for me it's a little bit more about how serious his injuries really are because you know rafa one of the things that you know we can say about rafa is he 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 has played a majority of his career despite having you know not not small injuries but you know fairly big ones with you know his foot uh with his knees that that have troubled him in the past as well um and and now you know it's a it's a whole different story uh with with nadal and uh, you know his foot once again so it's not that he's um, it's not that he he's a player he mentioned it himself he's a player that has always played through injuries and uh, so the question now is you know how bad are his injuries and are they really going to allow him to play at his best because if they if he's not at his best i don't believe that uh, you know rafa nadal not at his best has to be, you know go out and win the french open this year i do think he's got it in him to make the may make a deep run in the quarter of the semis but if he does come up against an alcaraz if he does come up against a novak djokovic all of, you know very possible scenarios um then i i do think he needs to be at his best in order to beat these guys right now because uh you know an injured nadal we saw uh, you know listen don't take anything away from nadal because he did come into the aussie open saying that he was potentially a little injured too but that yeah. was slightly different that was slightly different i think here at the french uh this is the place where he's usually come in you know winning two or three events on the clay this year not won a single one so i think that yeah. you know not just not one but you know lost to alcaraz last week in rome very surprising kind of uh, exit that he had to denis shapovalov you know the fashion yeah. in which he lost in uh yes. it's kind of the uh, the thing that kind of raises eyebrows especially in the tennis world so you know everybody knows that uh, nadal is a champion but it comes to you know battling through your body the thing about it is, is he is getting older and uh, the older you get the harder it is to kind of you know get through these uh, play through pain uh and so for rafa's sake you hope that he's not playing through pain and uh, and you hope that uh, you know you do get uh uh uh, uh 100% healthy and fit nadal but i don't think that uh, that's very likely this year right let's also talk about uh, wimbledon's ban on the russian and belarusian players in context with russia's invasion of ukraine uh the french open has allowed the russian players to compete at the roland garros uh what are your thoughts on this I understand both sides of the story or I honestly do uh, obviously the argument is um uh you know that uh, based on what's happening they don't want to support russian professionals russian uh, to to go out there and and, and compete uh, you know I I thought it was 
in a way silly that uh, you know the ITF had had kind of taken away the Russian flag and said that they were part of the Russian Tennis Federation because I mean everybody knows where Daniel Medvedev is from, everybody knows yeah. where Rublev is from, everyone yeah. knows where Karatsev is from. Um, so I think you know for me for me I I stand more on the side of uh, the French Open uh, where they where their stance is is that you know it's obviously everybody condemns what's happening in Russia. There's you know, don't 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 uh, don't don't take that any other way. That they're in support of, you know, what uh, what Russia is going to do into Ukraine. Um, but that being said, uh, I think you know I, I'm also friends with a lot of the Russian tennis players that I had some chances yeah. to kind of converse with them over the last uh, couple of months, especially after Wimbledon came up with this ban. Um, and you know, from their outlook, they're just trying to go out there and work. Uh, it's not the easiest thing for them. I'm not saying. Uh, that we should feel sorry for Russian tennis players, uh, certainly far from that. Uh, but you know, the French Open stance is is, uh, is uh, pretty clear that the Russian tennis players, the Belarusian tennis players, don't really have a whole lot to do with uh, the major decisions that Russia is taking on Ukraine, and hence they're going to allow um, you know the players to go out there and compete and uh, and uh, give them a fair chance at uh, doing well in the tournament. Whereas Wimbledon has taken a more uh, severe stance, which I can't really blame them on. You know, I, I don't agree with it, but I see their point of view. Sondip Devarman, thank you very much for talking to NDTV. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Osama. Take it easy and I'll see you guys around.